The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, this is Ken Gage, and this is the Out of Politics. And of course, I am the Democrat, and uh, I think you know really important Democrats nowadays because of all the things taking place. But my partner over here, my co-host Bill O'Brien, happens to be a Republican, and he Indeed. considers himself the best of the best. Is this correct? I consider myself the best of this duo. I'm not sure. <laughs> the best of the best. <laughs> well, your name is in the paper. <laughs> Let me uh, show this. There's a, there was a primary, right. and uh, I guess your majority whip, uh, Mr. Silver, will be running against Carl Andre. Well, and he'd be a good addition to the House. He worked really hard as a uh, state representative for a couple of terms, and uh, I know he's anxious to get back in, and we're anxious to get, oh, I don't, get back in. Oh, I don't think so. Carl Andre has is, is been around too long, and... But we will he have one of them on. So we're going to try to make sure that, that it's not any longer. <laughs> no, he's, he's, <laughs> Thank he's, you for that, Ken. Yeah, very welcome. Uh, <laughs> he's been around a long time, and uh, he, he knows politics, and, uh, and I'm glad he's coming up. And I'm sure, you know, how much money is the Republicans going to spend on this? I, I this, have no idea. Because I'm not we have a special the, election coming up in November. I'm not and involved I'm, in the campaign, so I don't know what the spending is on either side. Yeah. Well, but I bet uh, you have an opinion on that. I do. Uh, <laughs> let's make this clear. Uh, Carl Andre won by three votes, so there will be next week, by the time you see the show, uh, it will probably be over. The count will be over, and we believe Carl Andre will keep the three votes because it was counted three times at the polls. And he's asked me to be uh, one of the counters of the ballots up there. So I'll be up there on this coming Monday at 2 o'clock. So there's a tradition in the House when, when someone um, wins to the extent that it seems Mr. Andre might win, that we start calling him landslide. So it's going to be landslide, La landslide. Oh, Andre here. And all, all the three votes, he was swept into office. Well, we, we, we've had a Democrat, I believe it was uh, Representative Rose, Rhodes, uh, Fireman Brian, Brian Rhodes, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, by one by one. Well, once. It happens, you know. Ones by two. Yeah, and, and let's make that point. And listen, you know, I think we ought to always use this opportunity to drive it home for folks that your vote does make a difference. It really does. We see it every cycle, every... particularly with the 400 elections we have for the New Hampshire House. That there are those that are very close, one vote, a handful of votes. We've even had some, Ken, and, and you probably are, remember this as well, where. It's been an absolute tie. They'll absolute go, tie. They'll go through a, a, a recount, and it's still a tie. Yeah, and do they flip a coin? What do they do? I, they, they do flip a coin. Bill Gardner, the Secretary of State, um, usually suggests that as a tiebreaker. Um, and they'll flip a coin, and, and uh, whoever wins uh, the coin toss will, will, uh, the coin toss will win the um, election. You see, I, I have a different attitude. Everybody tells people to go out and vote. I tell them not to vote because I've got some neighbors, like, Let's say three neighbors, so I'm 25 percent. I'm I make four, and, well, I, this, and this, when they don't vote, I say, "Well, I voted for you." And to you're a Republican, I voted Democrat for you. You know, so, so, so this goes to prove something. A theory I have about Democrats, and the, <laughs> and, and the theory is every time they say something about Republicans, it's projection. 
And so, you know, the big, you know, issue now is, you know, as we're trying to maintain the integrity of elections through voter ID, um, they say, well, what? voter suppression, oh, voter suppression. Voter, idiot, idiot. And oh, it turns out please, that voter suppression please. is on the other side. You just please, told me about it. Please. You know, well, wait, how can I, what did I tell you? <laughs> you said that we, I, you don't want people to come out for the elections? Well, Ken, Ken. that's not, no, wait a minute. There's a difference between me telling them not to go and it's your party telling them to go and they're standing in line and at a particular hour they close the door and they don't let those people vote. Who do that is awful. No one does that. That I, is I have, awful. I have to tell you that most, I'm sure, election or polling areas are like mine in New Boston, mine in Mount Vernon, which is the moderator goes to the door and said, work, says, and I've seen them both do it, uh, Lee Nyquist and Peter Hayden. And so they, they'll get there and say, we're closing the polls. Is everyone inside? And people come running up from their cars because they've been having conversations, run inside, and he allows them to vote. No one's keeping people who are in line out from voting. Well, not here in New Hampshire, but let's face it, uh, there's been problems in Florida, problems, well, I believe, in Georgia. Where, and now, it, the interesting thing, what the Republicans are doing is uh, cutting out the times. In other words, you could vote for like three days. Now they're stopping that. And you, you've, got, you've got to empty your glasses of all the Kool-Aid you've been <laughs> drinking here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we go. This isn't happening. I know that's the rhetoric, but it's just not happening. And what is not happening is no voter fraud. Why would the Republicans use this as an example? Here in New Hampshire, what have we had? Uh, three cases in 10 years of vo voter fraud, and yet you guys right across the country, the Republicans are pushing this. Why? You know, if, if as in, it was happening in New Hampshire, you define who can vote here in such a manner that it, ex it allows anybody in the country or outside the country to come in and vote. Of course you're not going to have any voter fraud. And so when you have um, the, the vice chairman of your party, for example, uh, running a voter, youth voter hostel over in her, her home and saying anybody who works and is paid to work for the Democrat Party, well, just stay here and vote. And that's what happened. And then most, most of us would sit back as lay people and say, that's not right. That sounds a little bit like voter fraud. But of course, the definition of voter, who can vote here is so loose that it's not voter fraud. Well, I think what you guys are trying to do is to stop people who come here to go to school calls like UNH. If you don't register your car, you can't vote. I no, mean, not at all. We're just saying if you're a resident, vote. If you're not a resident, go vote in the state where so you are a resident. So in other words, what you're saying, to become a resident by going to college up in UNH, you're not a resident? No, you can be or not. You can choose whether you are or not. All we're saying is so what you gonna, if, you go, if you're going to vote, then understand that you've declared yourself as a resident well, uh, and, yeah, I and know, take on the responsibilities of but, residency. But what How is, is that so outrageous? But, but tell me, what is what do you say makes a resident? We're saying you can tell us whether you're a resident. Now, we know what the definition of domiciliary for voting purpose it is. It's a state of mind and presence. And we're saying if on election day you have the state of mind that you this is where you're going to live and you have no other place in mind, then fine, come here and live, come here and vote. But understand that you're a resident at that point and take on the responsibilities of residents. Well, wait a, wait, a, wait a second. A person who comes here to school should have the right to vote here in New Hampshire. But you're saying they must become a resident. And I believe it was you guys who why said... Should, why should they have the right to vote here? They should have the right to vote. They should have the right to vote in the state that they're a resident. But they don't. Have they should to have the right to declare. Car. They should have the what right to they? declare themselves a New Hampshire resident. But if they're going to do that, then take on the responsibilities of residents. But is the, wait a minute, declaring? What do you mean? I am a, going to. I'm the resident of New Hampshire, so I will vote here. What pulling else a, must pulling, one do? Pulling a valid. What, what else do you have to do if you're a resident? Well, you have to be available for jury duty. You have to pay taxes here. You have to get a license, a motor vehicle ah. license here. You have to register yeah, your we, cars we got it. here. We got it. You have to basically yeah. establish those connections with where you physically are and that you're voting, that your, your vote becomes something other than what we've seen which in the past, which is the Democratic Party paying campaign workers to come here and work and then vote. And, you know, what's interesting is that Somebody told me two weeks ago that I should bring this up to you, that that's exactly what Romney's people were doing, were voting up here. 
his workers, et cetera, that, we, that, that he was bringing in, were voting up here. So you're there's, saying there's absolutely it's no just example Democrats? Of that. You know, this, this is, no, this is one of the things. I can, well, cite, the I can cite chapter and verse. I can talk about how in Kathy Sullivan's house, um, the, the uh, Baines's uh, campaign manager came from Montana, checked in there, worked the campaign, voted, and then left the next day to go to Cambridge to live, Cambridge, Massachusetts to live. Now, you're just saying in, in conclusory that, that somehow some Romney workers come are, and live. But, I'm, I'm telling you I, that there's specific examples that we can find, point to. And what we hear is rhetoric that, oh, you, you are doing it before, as well. No, we're not doing yeah, it. Yeah, you were doing no. it. No. Yeah. Give me, you were. Give me chapter Are you trying to verse? tell me that no, nobody from the Romney campaign had, had turned around and voted here, although they were from another uh, what, state? What, I, what I'm telling you is it's easy to say those things without any proof. I just gave you proof, for example, of, of how uh, the uh, a Democratic Party official was involved in this sort of activity. Well, I'll, I'll tell you. I, I gave you two examples, one with your current vice chairman and the other with, what is Kathy Sullivan? She was a chairman of the party. Um, tell, you, now you say, well, Romney did it too. It's, it's, well, it's what, not, what, there's no evidence the of that. Fact, no, wait a minute. The fact is that this was told to me, and there were examples, but I just never brought it up. So I don't have that information right, right before me. But having said that, you, I'm sure some of the Romney people have voted up here in New Hampshire. Well, of course you're sure. You're a Democrat and you want to be oh, sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so I understand. I mean, you're, you're saying it in good faith, and I'll accept it as in good faith, and sometimes people in good faith are just wrong. Oh, I, I see. <laughs> like, yes. All right, okay. Well, this, this has been fun. But once, once more, I think it's very important to, to show this because there will be, and here is Carl Andre, and here's Mr. Silva right here. Uh, uh, we believe that it will be Carl Andre, and this is Ward 8, and Mr. Silver, and Carl Andre won the primary by three votes. So as uh, Mr. O'Brien has made it very clear, you go vote. And I say, you go vote, because if you don't, I'll have you vote. And, and so it's a time for the voters of that ward to have an, an extra opportunity most of us don't get. It's a special election. So they can check in. If you don't want Obamacare, Vote for the Republican. Oh. It's a time, it's it's an oh. opportunity to send the message out oh. that if you think that that uh, taxes and fees been increased, that Maggie Hassan trying to pass a budget with phantom revenue and then checking out of the process and in, in in March is wrong. That's a chance to send them a message. Vote for the Republican. You know, I, I, what I find very fascinating about what you say is the voters did go out. And the voters didn't believe in the Republicans this time around. No matter what you say right now, because, because it was awful. You guys were constantly attacking people. And so, we attacked and no one. So, the, oh, the, the party really? of demonization is the Democratic oh, Party. So, Certainly, your presidential candidate won, and it's difficult as a state representative in the middle of the ballot, you know, if you're involved in a race. Yes, but how to, can to you have stand, a super majority stand, and lose? Stand, the same way you guys had a majority. Not a left. super majority. You went down to 25%. Nobody had a super majority. Three, one out of every four. 100 years you had the super majority. Well, well that's not true at all. See, see you gotta, you got to watch facts. There, there was a super majority in 2000. There was 286 Republicans at that point. And, so, and that's a super majority being enough to override a veto. All right, okay. And, and so yeah. there had been one. And, and what happened was that this is a swing state, and it swings back and forth. It swung against us to the tune of about 180 reps we were left with after having about 290 reps. That's a lot of seats. To, we weren't, however, uh, uh, rejected to the extent that the Democrats were in 2010 when they were left with just over 100 representatives. Only one out of it. I was one of them. Uh, uh, only yeah. <laughs> Well, I, you're, you were you're, running you're, the show. You're a secret up, Republican, yeah. so I was throwing you in the other column. Yeah, there. <laughs> and he was running it. He gave me such a hard time. I'll, 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 I'll tell you. But well, you know, you guys have got to get off this. Guess what? He has won the election today. Uh, the House of Representatives, with a great Cantor and Bonner and all the group, uh, voted to defund Obamacare, as you call it. So that means the Republicans are going to. Close the government down again. True? No, no. It's going to be Obama who decides to veto a responsible oh. budget. If, if it gets past Harry Reid, who is, uh, uh, does nothing, does nothing more 
then continue the spending to the point that our country is going to become another Greece, another Argentina. Oh, you guys, I'll tell you. <laughs> I just There's love no Florida here, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, it's delightful in, on, on our part to have the facts on our side. It, it makes it so much easier. Well, to... if you've got such the facts on your side, then what you're doing is you're saying that the voters really don't know what they're doing because they voted you guys out and they voted the they... Democrats in up here in New Hampshire, and yet you keep saying that you know, you know, you know. But especially when it comes to Obamacare, what else do you have? What, what, what else do we have? Write something down that you're okay. going to do. I mean, what, what else do we have? We have Benghazi and and your your oh, wait a and, minute. and the Democrat Don't, president. You accuse me of, it, of switching it, things it, it, right it, in the middle here. Hold no, on, you, you asked what else about, do we have? I'm going to talk about IRS no, no, scandal. Talk, I'm going to talk about the the fact that no, uh, uh, our president left a U.S. ambassador to die at the hands of a. Uh, and how long ago was that? Uh, it was it was just over a year ago. Really, just over a year ago. Hmm. We just uh, but a w last week was okay. was the okay. first anniversary. Now, you, now I understand you, you that Hillary Clinton, a, you, when it was only like four know, months ago, said, "What it, difference does it make?" You make it sound as if as if anything could have been done, and they we we they have, have, they have made it very very clear that nobody could have got there within ten hours. That's not. And there that's wasn't going to be enough people true. coming. No, there wasn't enough people who could defend themselves and defend who was there. They, they had military assets of the CIA annex in Benghazi who were told to stand down. They had military assets within 10 hours in, in Sicily and, and, and uh, others in the other par uh, parts well, of Italy. 10 hours, it's all over. We know that. No. 10 hours, it was all over. There, there, there was no effort to, to save Americans being attacked on the 10th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, of, uh, it was, yes, it, was, it, was, it was unbelievable to I con consider love. this. And then, to make it even worse, the president goes in front of the United Nation and, and apologizes for a video that had nothing to do with that attack at all, apologized, and said it was our fault that our ambassador was killed. Oh, and, and that, that, I won't put up with that. I'll go so far with you. That's not exactly what he said. And that, but he but you, can, you, you can interpret it that way. But hold on a second. What we were talking was about Obamacare, all right? And we were, I just said to you, well, you don't want Obamacare at all. And your Republicans in the House of Representatives in Washington just voted to defund it. That means the government will be closed down. Who's closing the government down? It, it, those who don't agree in with Washington. You. In Washington. With who you. doesn't agree in Washington? Is it the president and the Republican House? Wait, the, the pre Democrat wait, the, president, the president was voted in. Let me as see. was the Democrat House. I mean, the, excuse me, the Republican House. The majority. That will change. I, actually, it won't. I think every any, any independent view uh, observer understands that this upcoming election is going to be just disastrous for Democrats, and rightfully so. Why? Why would you? I mean, because they passed a law in, in, in it called Obamacare, that, and they said if you want to keep uh, your insurance, you can keep it. That's turning out not to be true. You know, ask all the spouses of UPS workers who are going to lose their their coverage. Ask all the Walmart workers who had private insurance who are going to lose that insurance. Ask all the restaurant and hospitality workers who are being put down to under 30 hours a week so that their, their employees can stay in business. And, so that, and, they, so, and then they said no taxes. It so why out, don't you ask two particular restaurants who came out a year ago and said that they were going to cut their employees down to 30 hours, although it would be a year away, so they wouldn't have to insure them. This is the type of bull that we, as Americans, are getting. You will not give Obama care a chance. Insurance companies will not. You wouldn't even let us set this up, is, this is, you guys wouldn't even let us set up a, a, we, we, uh, an, we, we an insurance exchange. We so discussed, the we discussed, the insurance this, we discussed this in a prior show, and the reason we didn't is because we didn't want to saddle the people of New Hampshire with an ongoing obligation of $30 million to run that exchange and to do more to even set it up uh, to implement a policy, a, a, a legislative scheme that's going to dollars. it's going to fail. It wasn't. Oh, okay. It's going to fail because 
okay. of its own weight. Okay, wait, they wait. can't even implement it. Okay, wait, Everybody's wait. getting a waiver. Wait. Ken, are you, have you got a waiver yet? Not, not as of yet. <laughs> but you tell so, me. Have you talked to them? You, no, Everybody wait a wants a waiver. You're, you're against everything. Oh, no, no, I'm hey, not at all. You're against absolutely oh, no, everything. Oh, no, I'm not at all. You want Put to talk on paper what you would do instead of Obamacare. Well, first of all, during the debate of Obamacare, the Republicans were coming out with legislation after legislation that would have what is it? dealt with. It, what, what, what is it? It would have allowed interstate, interstate purchasing of health care insurance. It would have allowed us to do away with all the mandates. The Heartland Institute says that um, over half the cost of medical insurance is a result of mandated coverages. You can't, for example, go in and buy a policy in New Hampshire unless um, you buy it and it covers uh, gastric, uh, bariatric surgery, uh, it covers uh, psychiatric treatment, it covers um, uh, drug abuse treatment. You might just want to say, you know what, I want to get the less expensive policy that, wa that only covers the fact if I get sick, I, I don't no, need. No, that's not, but that's it, not, that's in, not in, what in, the insurance company is doing. What they're saying there's is over, there's 5, over 5, 000. 000, There's over 1,000 mandate, mandated coverages in the United States. We would get past that. We would allow in New Hampshire, for example, for any other licensed in, in medical insurer to come into New Hampshire and sell their policy. Right now, for, for uh, well, individual you, you, coverage, we only have you, Anthem. I know, but we you, have a monopoly. You, you have a super of Gene majority. Gene. Why didn't you do something? We, we did a lot of things. Well, no, and, and, I know, but why didn't you do this? This is so important. Oh, wait a minute. It's Obamacare coming down no, in we, two years. So why, if you do nothing, it's going to screw we, things we, up. We, we passed, we make passed you guys legislation that made it better here. But we can't without... How? One insurance company? That, you know why we have one insurance company? Because of Gene Shaheen. And Gene Shaheen pushed community rating so that insurance companies can no longer rate on risk. And when, when she pushed that legislation, and it was adopted with Republican and Democrat votes, I will admit that, um, you, your party was the biggest backer of it, but it had Republican votes. When she passed that legislation, there were 16 insurance companies writing health care insurance in New Hampshire. There was competition, which is finally is what we want to get to. Now there is one writing individual policies, and that's Anthem. And that's the only one that signed up for this federal it, it, exchange. Well, that's going to cover no. Well, let's get this straight. No, they signed up for it. They didn't sign up for it. They, they put everything down they wanted to do, and then they went to the federal government, and they're going to get it, which means Nash was going to lose one hospital. If we would have set the exchange you, you, up, you would have set the exchange you know, up. You know what's wrong? You made it illegal to you, set up an exchange. You, you so know the insurance companies you know, are going to screw us. You know what's wrong with Obamacare? What's wrong with this is it does two things. It hijacks, hijacks state financing in order to extend coverage, and it takes young people and it says, we'll fine you. They, you know, Scalia calls it a tax. Obama calls it a, uh, a, 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 excuse me, Roberts calls it a tax, um, Chief Justice Roberts of the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, Obama calls it a, a penalty. But what it is is it takes young people and it says, even though on average if you're under the age of 30, you're only going to incur about $800 worth of medical uh, costs a year, we're going to require you to buy policies that under this, um, the mandated coverage, is going to cost about $9,000 you know, a year. And it I, does it in I, order to cover um, older no, people. No, no. So it hurts company, young no, people, I, it hurts I, state I, finances. I'll take, your, I'll take your side, not enough insurance companies. If you say it was in your hand, okay. Obviously, that was a mistake. But you, with a Speaker of the House, with a supermajority, you couldn't have done anything about that? No, because we were opposed by the hospitals. We tried to do quite a bit. So, excuse me, super majority. You didn't even bring anything in for a vote? We, we did. We had pieces of legislation that we voted to do all these things. To, to bring more insurance yes. companies in? and we had business lobbyists and, and you got it through lobbyists. the House, of course. No, we didn't get it Why? through the House. Because so, most of them, because if you got the, a super majority, then some of the yeah, Republicans. Listen, Ken, don't, you know, don't, don't be unrealistic. Um, this is, there's, there's this belief out there that no matter what happened when I was Speaker, that it was, there were not 297 Republicans, there was only one Republican, and I had 297 votes that I would just take out of my pocket at any given time. That's not how a legislature works. You know that, everyone knows that. The way it works is that even within a large caucus like that, you have to draw together various elements to produce any legislation. We got through a lot of good and contentious legislation. 
We passed parental notification. We we lowered we lowered we lowered twenty taxes let's, and fees. We got a lot of issue. things done. We 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 had uh, forty different bills, I think it was, that reduced regulations. We did a lot of things. There there are uh, points where you have to say, can we get everything We're done? We're talking no. about hospitals and insurance companies. Right. The super majority. Were there any bills? Yes, there that were. Came in, and your party voted. And your wait a minute. We're only 103. You guys are 297. Your, your, your well, again, two, 103 voting in a block as your party always does in the legislature. All you need is to gain another 100, 120 or so, and you got a majority of it. So and, and you're so saying on your issues Republicans like that, voted for it also. Well, not a majority, but enough went along with the, the solid Democrat voting blocks that on a lot of these reform issues in the area of medical insurance, we couldn't get it in. Your party wanted Obamacare so much that no matter what we suggested as alternate reforms, they would vote against it. And there were enough uh, uh, Republican members, um, not a majority, who would sit there and go, you know, I don't know what, I don't want to be involved in this controversy. Um, we'll just, uh, just vote just, for the status just quo. To, just to pull you back a little, okay? Because we can just go on and on about this. Just to pull you back a little. Are you telling me, with a supermajority, there were efforts to bring or let other insurance companies come in to the state? Th there's been legislation. And in time. turn, it's the reason why it didn't happen is that Republicans went to the Democratic I, side. I filed, is that le I filed legislation in my name and my with me as a sponsor that would have, for example, allow any. Um, a medical insurer who's licensed in any state in the country to come into New Hampshire and write, write insurance, they would only have to agree to two things. One is to have simple to understand policies that they get approved by the New Hampshire Commissioner of Insurance um, so there'd be no question what coverage and they'd have to make themselves subject to New Hampshire courts. So, you know, if it's a California company in New Hampshire, Correct. a patient would have to write right. California to enforce it. That was voted against. And, you know, by Republicans and Democrats. By Republicans and Democrats. Okay. And, and so, you know, so, again, uh, again, people... Can, and, and, can you turn around and say that the insurance companies have a, a strong lobby? Um, the, well, we know the insurance companies have. You, you're on commerce. I know. <laughs> I know. know. <laughs> That's like saying, it's you know, can, 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 we, can we agree it's that awful. the sun's going to rise in and the morning? And, you know, the, 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 and by the way, I am on commerce, which is insurance and banking, which is a hell of a place to be at, at this time. But... I got news for you. Uh, I never knew how how strong particular lobbies are. They would come in and they would see that I was just stuck on something, so they would let it go through the committee, because of myself and a few other people. All right, go to the house, maybe even pass the house. Once it got to the Senate, forget it. There's yeah. so much money. There's so much money uh, involved. There. I don't know what. It takes you to run. It took me about three thousand five hundred dollars for a hundred dollar a year job. So and oh, by the, one other thing, because I think this is important. By the way, I received not one penny from insurance and banking in three terms. Right. So. You know, at times, and I certainly take solace in this myself. Um, you can take pleasure in your enemy. Um, and so I see that you do. <laughs> Good for you. Um, you know, I, I, I agree with you um, when it comes to what happens in the House. I don't know if you um, have ever noticed, I mean, Speaker, I noticed that if, if up in the third floor there's the Senate President's office and all the Senate leaders and the House leaders, Minority Leader, Majority Leader, the Speaker's office, and there's a bench there, kind of matched on both sides. Um, they're at one end of the hallway, at the other end of the hallway. Um, sometimes go up there, and, and uh, you will, when we're not in session, and you'll notice that on the House bench, there's not many people sitting usually every once in a while. There's a little backup of appointments, but it's not usual at all. If you go to the Senate side, you'll see the lobbyists always sitting there waiting for their appointments yeah. to come up. Yeah. It's because, you know, for better or worse, and, and it was worse in terms of the, the PR, you know, hits that we took when I was Speaker, but better in many other ways, we're an unruly bunch, and we're chaotic. And, and you really can't, it's not really easy to corral together a couple hundred votes to get what you want if you're a lobbyist or to stop something that you want. 
you know, this, it's a very democratic institution. There's a lot of members like you who say, yeah, you know, I don't need you. I, you know, and I don't need a lot of money to run, and I'm getting elected because I'm known in my community. Over the Senate side, there's, it's much more possible to bring that pressure to bear. It's, and it's, it's, it's expensive to run, you know, 75,000, 100,000 is kind to of To run for what, 100, 200 dollar a year? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, but it's well, sort of the price of entry and, and uh, you know, that's, that's right. I mean, you'd, you'd never take out of your own pocket $100,000 to run for that job, but a lot of lobbyists will take that kind of money out oh, of their pocket. Oh, to, it means nothing. Yeah. It means nothing because it's really millions upon millions and millions that they can make in New Hampshire. Yeah. And, and I, I, I can tell you, I don't want to be too harsh in the Senate because it really, it really is on, on both sides Why? of the aisle. Well, on both sides of the aisle, it's, it's, I don't want people to get the wrong impression there's some really honorable people. Who serve? There are uh, and, in the Senate. And, yes, there are and they honorable they, people, and they and they serve with one goal in mind, which is is to do right by the constituents and the people of New Hampshire. But it's you know. It's, I don't. I don't necessarily. Yeah. What I'm it, not saying everyone, but what, I think no. What it comes down to is, let's face it, 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 is money. There's no question about that. You you, and no matter even if you really disagree with something that a lobbyist comes in but is willing to or have in the past given you money, you will listen and you might not fight as hard against something that you're really against but the lobbyists have given you money. You, 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 know, you know, I think it's more like this. Um, the people who tend to donate to politicians that have that kind of um, influence, you know, as the senators do, um, you're not going to go as if you're, for example, um, pro-abortion. You're not going to go to a pro-life uh, representative and give them any money. You're not going to change them. They're not going to change their vote. Um, uh, and, and so th th there's not that kind of money being used to change. But what it is, well, if, that, if you're, 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 you're pro-life. You're using something that's so obvious. Yeah, but, but I, do, I, I, I do it because it, 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 it's suggested in other less obvious areas. Yeah. If, if you're pro-life, um, however, you're going to get donations from pro-life votes, uh, lobbyists perhaps, or organizations, and you're going to listen to them, and you're going to listen to them as they explain nuances of certain bills and so forth, um, and so they're going to have access. And so more, more often than not, it's not so much, uh, I'm giving you money because I want you to vote this way on this piece of legislation, or even in the subject area, but I, but I know you well anyway, and I want to have access to you to talk to you about you know, what's important and, and um, you know, how we can win. And r right in, uh, when, when I first went up there, you get a little booklet of the do's and the don'ts. One of the, one of the things, was, listen to lobbyists. I mean, listen, they, they have some very important information. The, the New Hampshire legislature has substantially no staff. Now, senators get one um, staff person. Representatives get none. The minority office has a few. Majority office has a few, and speaker has four, you know, you have a receptionist and, and a secretary and a PR person, chief of staff maybe. And, and as opposed to, I don't know if I'd ever mentioned this to you, Ken, I, I, I went to, uh, you know, some speakers conference and I saw Sheila Oliver, who's speaker in New Jersey, and became fairly friendly with her, a Democrat speaker. And, you know, we got around to, I said, you know, how many staff people do you have? And not, not people working in the legislature, directly in your office, speaker's office. And she said, 83, you know. 83. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and I went to Gordon Fox, who's at that time, I think he's still a speaker, another Democrat, speaker down in Rhode Island. And we became fairly friendly. And, and I asked him how many he had. And I try to remember the exact numbers, like 13 or so. A little old Rhode Island, half the population of, of New Hampshire. We have about, I think I had four and a half. The half was part-time general, yeah, uh, part yeah, house council. Yeah. And, and so we have to rely in a substantial degree on what industry and, and organizational representatives, lobbyists, will, will tell us. I mean, you take it with a grain of salt, but there's been times, you it's, know, I'll go to, uh, uh, you know, Josiah Bartlett Center or some of the more reputable, um, you know, maybe the, the um, local government center and say, could you look up? you know, um, uh, some information for me. But you what, what you're not saying, and I think this is important for the, for the people of Nashville and New Hampshire, when you would tell these people how much money you made, you know, as a speaker compared to what they made and how the difference in the, in the people, what would they say to you? Well, I mean, they're, they're always surprised. I mean, there's, there's, 
uh, kind of a, a certain pride that some states take in having what they call a citizen legislation. New Hampshire is one of those states. And so we talk about that. And I talk to, you know, folks from, what's this is a good example of a state, maybe, you know, not Utah or Iowa, for example. And I'd say, you know, we're citizen legislation. Yeah, they go, we are too. And I'd say, well, how's it work? I said, well, you know, we only got one staff member apiece. And, and you know, we're getting paid, you know, 7500 a, a, a year. But, of course, we do get a... Three hundred dollar day stipend when we're actually in session, and we get travel back and forth. And I said, "Well, so it's it, it's you know kind of a little bit, and we get medical insurance." And, oh yes, and, yes, and, yes, yes, and, yes. Uh, So I said, "Well, it's enough to keep you going." They said, "Yeah," and, and they said, "How much you get paid?" And we go, hundred dollars a year." Any medical insurance? No. No. You get any pension? No. Because no. a number of uh, uh, legislators across the country they can participate in the employee pension program. Yes. Um, so yes. Uh, you know, and. and it's good. It, you know, we've talked about this. It's good and bad. And, you know, the, the um, good thing about it is you get really a wide diversity of people, and you get them up there, I think, for, for quite often the right reason. They're trying to do well by their community, just as selectmen do and school board yes. members do. Yes. Um, you know, the bad thing is that you, you, it's hard to get people who are in, uh, have to work or in, in their careers um, to come up. You know, it's it's, just, it, it, let me tell you, it, let's make this really clear. Uh, if you become a state representative, you literally reach in your pocket to take money out to do it. Yeah, and and you know and I, it, I, that's I, just the way it is. So when you say no one in the United States can say that they truly have a volunteer government, we are it. Yeah, we're we're about we it. I don't it. think there's any, you know, and on the other end of the extreme are, are places as you would might suspect, like you know New York, or Illinois, or California. Um, Massachusetts uh, also where legislators get paid a really handsome salary. Yes. You know, yes. handsome by any measure, not just yes. measured against $100 we, a and, year. And plus all the perks. There's a lot of perks. Well, you know, in Massachusetts, I'm not sure what it is across country, but in Massachusetts, you do get medical insurance. You're part of the state employee pension system. Um, you know, you, you, you know, I, I practice law down in, in Massachusetts, so I came to know some of the um, legislators down there. And, and there was a real difference between what I found up here and what I saw down there. What I found here were people, uh, legislators, who were kind of more interested in issues and, and legislation and, and understood. And, and they, they were sacrificing to be there, so they wanted to get things done. Um, not always, but down in Massachusetts, I'd find people who had a, a, another goal in mind. The goal was to stay in that job. You know, a just, narrow... It, it, it re the focus was, right. I, you know, this is, in some cases... You'd have to agree with them if they ever expressed this their way. That was the best job they were ever going to have. And so the, the focus was get myself reelected. And, you know, there, there are times that you have to do things that push the envelope, that, that involve leadership. Absolutely. And you might go beyond where your constituents are or beyond where New Hampshire is as a whole and, and, and get thrown out. Well, but, I, but that's okay. You know, yeah. you did the right thing. I, two years ago, stood up. 90, see, it was 103, I think 92 Democrats voted against what I wished. And there was only 103. Mm -hmm. There were a couple who were missing, so only really <laughs> two or three Democrats voted. The Republicans voted, it, and then it, then it went through. But I truly believe it. I have taken a beating for it. People who go against their party are in a sense kind of uh, uh, neglected or, or not given a good seat. Now, I know, this is, I know people think when they say seat, they think, oh, well, they don't get a good seat. They're all upset. Well, you know, if you've been in the legislature, as I have for three terms, I have a lot more to say. I have a lot more to do. I have a lot more, polit you know, during breaks, et cetera. Right. They put people right in the middle who, who start out at the very beginning or really don't have anything. Right. But it's physically uncomfortable, too. It can be. Yeah, We won't mention who and we won't mention when, but there was a, I believe you said, there was a uh, Speaker of the House that you knew, a very prominent person from the city of Nashua. That Speaker wanted to put this person right in the middle of the row and not on the ends where he could work. Uh, we won't go over the names right now, but you, you did tell me that. Is that the, the one that they... Uh, the other one who got the person... That got the, 
Well, there, there, there is a seat there that's known by, well, I'll just say it. He's, he's very proud of it, actually. The Charlie Bass seat. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently Charlie crossed up some speaker or another, and, and there's a seat in the middle of, we have, we call them divisions, it's five sections. Right. There's the seat that's in the middle of division three, the middle section, the biggest uh, section. It's, it's the one seat that has the most seats on either side of it, so it's right in the middle. And, and uh, I think Charlie might have been a committee ch chair, a vice chair, and, and somebody else came along and challenged that speaker who made him a committee chair, a vice chair. And, that person lost the challenge, and so Charlie found himself not only without his chairmanship, but, but in, in well, now what is known as the Charlie Bassey. <laughs> and he was very good humor about it. I mean, we, we uh, you know, saw so, so, so many people get angry in that situation, but uh, he was very good humor about it. Let me tell you how he, good humored he was. Um, back when I was speaker, so this would have been back in 2011, I think right near the beginning of the term, uh, we had a little ceremony where um, some folks donated a bench um, for, in the name of Mike Wally. It's, okay, it's yeah. the one that's, as if you're facing the podium, it's just to the right of the podium. And uh, a lot of folks came by who had known Mike Wally, who had been a state representative from Alta Bay, um, had been, uh, was, was he a majority leader or deputy speaker or something under, under Gene Chandler? Um, and, and a good fellow, you know, I, I knew him, a really good guy, and he died of cancer. Um, and and um, Charlie came, and so I'm sitting there. I had to say a few words, and uh, I'm sitting in front waiting for the ceremony to move along. And I looked over to my left. I was sitting in front of Division Three, and who should be sitting in a Charlie Bass seat but Charlie Bass? Charlie Bass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there weren't a lot of people there, but he kind of moved back, and he had a little twinkle in his eye. Well, you know? <laughs> what people don't know is that as a former speaker, you can sit anywhere you want to, and you chose to sit where? Um, way in the back of was it Division Four? Or I believe. Yeah, Division Four. Sitting right so, next to Mary Nelson. Yeah, sitting next to Mary Nelson, who I didn't know, a, a state representative, Democrat from yeah, Nashua, yeah. who's just a delightful lady. Isn't she? Yeah, yeah she, she just really is. is. Yeah. Um, just, I'm so glad to have come to know. But her. What, I guess the point when we talk about seats, you could sit anywhere you want to. You wanted way in the back, and you know, uh, one of the reasons is you're always up. You're you, working, we, you're, you're talking, you're trying to get, well, get, you know, get the true reason. The true reason is when I, when I realized we weren't going to be in a majority, um, I decided I didn't want to be a minority leader, which I certainly could have become. You could have been, and, yes. And, and so um, I decided that you know, I'd leave it to others. I called around my caucus and those people who would um, you know, be the natural candidates for that and told them that evening I'm not running again. And I decided um, when, I chose, when I asked for a seat, to get away from the front, get away from where they are, get yeah. away from looking like I'm in a, any sort of a leadership position, and you know, get back to the back row. I came out of the back row to be speaker. I was, um, you know, I was starting my third term. I was only a second term member the the uh, the um, year before, the, the term before, and so I was in a back seat. And so there's no nothing wrong with going back to being a back bencher. That's no, fine. actually, it's it's quicker to get out. It's quicker to get to the bathroom. It's and quicker. It's it's uh, it's and a far better place. There's, to a, be. there's actually a, a door behind me that most people don't know about, but now all the people yeah, in Nashville we're, we're know tell about you. it. This is an <laughs> interesting door. And then there's a, there's a door that actually you can slip out and it goes kind of back down into the hall of flags right near the front of the. Oh, stadium. and that is that's right, and that's a really a sneaky, sneaky, and also you can go up to the the uh, the gallery. You can, uh, you, up, you, you, can you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sneaky isn't the word I'd use. Convenient, maybe. No, or... sneaky, definitely. <laughs> when people want to get out of there, yeah, they're yeah. right down on the hollow flags, and they're out. You're First out of the up. building at that point. Yeah. Well, you're not going to run for Congress, and you're not going to run for state representative again? No, I, I think I've contributed at this point. Um, you know, it was... Uh, uh, and I say this not just because it sounds like the right thing to say, but because it's, I speak from my heart. It was, it was, it was truly an honor to be um, given by my, my neighbors, to allow, be allowed to represent them. To pay the price for it? Uh, you know, we, 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 I knew, and I've said this before, that if, if you come forward, and you're not going to agree with this, Ken, but if you come forward as a conservative leader, whether it's on a state level or national level, part of the response is going to be, Harsh. It's going to be trying to find if there's, oh, if there's anything in your personality they can pick away at. 
Um, you know, if it's, they, there's a characterization of the politics of conservatives as not being smart. Um, and so you're going to be accused of, of being, you know, mendacious. And, and you've and been dumb. accused of some you things know, that they, you haven't done, but your party, some people in Well, and, and, and also, and, and, you know, it's not so much happening this term, but it's, you know, as, we, as I said, the, the, the legislature as a whole is chaotic. Anyone can file any legislation they want. Anything and when you have, at all. And when you have 297 members, and oh, I'm trying to remember now, of that 297, I think it was 167, um, had not been there the year before, and around 140 had never been a state representative of, at all. And so they're coming in, and a lot of them don't know the, the traditions of the place. Decorum. The decorum. And, sure. and, and a lot of them understand this is my one chance. I'm not going to be reelected. I mean, in any of those elections where you have a wave election, yeah. I, I think there's, there's a number of people that are astute enough to realize, you know, maybe in, in the normal course I'd never get here. You know, if I'm, if I'm in, um, you know, some of these districts that are heavily Democratic registrants, for example, I'm not going to be able to win. So we really. And so, and so, they, so there's, a, there's a tendency to say, I'm going to get everything I can get. Yeah, so we don't now. really need term limits up here. In <laughs> well, no, I mean, just, just in the normal course, even without these wave elections, no. um, about a third of, of representatives decide not to run again. I mean, because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a real burden. Well, I think I, I, think I told you in the one year, I was in three automobile accidents, yeah. uh, rear ended. Yeah. Uh, last day of the session, ran over a uh, an axle of a truck, of a dump truck, blew the tires off the driver's side. The car was basically totaled. That was about in the same place where that axle came off earlier this week. Did you, remember, did you see that? Uh, no. Oh, you didn't see the reports? So was, it, just... was it on the Easy Pass area? No, it was uh, a truck going south on Route 93, um, uh, lost oh, yeah. its axle, yeah. and it went over to the northbound lane, if I have it correct, <clears throat> um, kind of where, where it happened with you. So. Yeah. Oh, listen, yeah. three, and then once six of us went off the road on a winter heading up towards Concord. So... Was that six Democrats? Or? Uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> was that that day that we had a tough vote? Or? The, no, it, it, it was two Democrats that I pushed, they, they, you know... Got him right on the road. <laughs> um, but so anyway, if you if you really want to do that, if you really want to become a, a politician here in New Hampshire, uh, and you go out and you you know you do what uh, Mr. Silver's uh, doing now and uh, Mr. Carl Andre is doing, and uh, uh, sadly, uh, I don't think 400 people came out for all three uh, of the individuals. And I think it was like. 9,000 in the ward. I mean, it was something really ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I mean, it works so hard and the people don't come out. Yeah, I, I understand. But, you know, on the other hand, the, the ones who do come out are the ones that care and that are, are probably staying knowledgeable. And theirs are very smart votes, usually. And, and, you know, part of it is, and this is where I get a little concerned, is it becomes an organizational election. You know, who can turn out their voters? Um, rather than... Well, that's always the way it is, anyway, who can turn out the vote. Well, not, you know, not so much during a presidential election. During a presidential election, you're just people, are, people are coming. You know, yeah, no and, matter what, right. Yeah. Um, you know, in my town, I think we get up to, on presidential election years, we get up to 85, 90% of the voters who come out. Um, well, both my towns, you know, in my district. Um, so it's, and I'm sure Nashville's, you know, of that, uh, of that same percentage. New Hampshire voters are, are, are really dedicated to, oh. to elections. Absolutely, and it's interesting to see some of the former presidents talk about New Hampshire, like Clinton and, and a few others who uh, uh, have come up here and, in a sense, took a beating, but they got out of here. Clinton got out of here second, and he thought, I'm back. You well, you're right, the, come, the comeback there. kid, yeah. I mean, it, because it yeah. looks so, with the Jennifer Flowers uh, revelations, it looks so bad for him, as, as it should have been bad for him, but he pulled it off. Well, he has one, one person who likes to campaign. He does. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's just one of those. Yeah. I mean, we, we've, had, we've had certain figures in our, our recent political history, and I say recent over the last hundred years, who have just been great politicians. And, and certainly Lyndon Johnson was. Oh, oh Bill amazing. Bill Clinton was. Amazing. Uh, I think to, to um, a, a large degree, Franklin Roosevelt was just, oh, yeah. just, yes, a, yes, just yes. a great politician. Right. He really was. They loved it. 
Yeah, yeah. They loved it. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to read about those people, pleasure to see them in action. Oh, we're um, talk, going to talk about books we're reading. What are you reading right now? Are you reading? In you know, I, I have been so busy that I'm still stuck on the one book I've been talking to you about, which is the Warrior Cops. Oh, um, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, which yes. is a, uh, a interesting book. Mm. It's, it's talking about the militarization of the police and, um, you know, not, not praising it. You know, we have that, that uh, uh, little bit of controversy. I'm not sure if you followed it in New Hampshire where the city of Concord was considering whether or not to accept a Homeland Security um, grant to buy a, a Bearcat, I don't know, they call it a tank, I guess it's an armored vehicle. Yes, okay. Um, and, and uh, you know, this is one of the points that this book makes, is that you have little cities such as Concord, which has, what, 42, 45,000 people arming themselves to the teeth. And, and, you know, the concern is, it's like the old adage about the carpenter or the hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, a police department with a SWAT team, everything looks like a hostage situation. Well, and, I, and they start I, using, you know... I hate to bring it up, but it was you guys who uh, let the representative carry guns inside, what, what, what? Carry guns inside the... Inside the you know, legislative hall there. Yeah. So, so we're so talking we about we, arming one another. We need like, bear God, cat. We need it was bear, awful. We need bear cats because of that. Awful. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm having difficulty you, making the connection. When you're sitting there. down, where, well, you're the one who said, okay, you can carry guns. And when you see a gun sliding past you on the floor, sitting. You, you know, all we did was return to what the rule had been for decades and decades. I agree. I voted for you. I yeah. voted not for you. I voted for. I yeah. truly believe if you're a grown up, and guess what, you uh, are an elected official. If you want to carry a, and you want to know something, it, all you have to do is go up there on a hot day, and there are a lot of uh, men who are not taking off the coats, and there are a lot of women who, who are holding on to their little purses. So people do carry guns. Yeah. Yeah, okay. They do, I, I, and that's one of the reasons that the New Hampshire House, unlike most state houses across the country. Don't, don't have, does not have any uh, metal de de detectors. And they're safe places. Gun-free zones are where violence occurs. Well, I mean, uh, we have about three minutes. So I'm, so I'm reading a biography about uh, uh, J.D. Salinger. And uh, very, very fascinating because Matt Salinger, his son, was up here uh, two years ago trying to get a bill that... Uh, to basically to protect people like his father for, with privacy. Right. The stuff that took place to Salinger was awful right. up here in New Hampshire. I mean, people were jumping on him. Right. Uh, so that didn't work out. He lived uh, in, was it Walpole where he lived there? Uh, uh, Windsor? Or? Wins, uh, Windsor's in Vermont. I think it was across okay. the river. Uh, maybe I'm maybe right. No, right? I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah. No, I've read reviews of that book. It's it's a well done book from what I the reviews said. And it was interesting to see that uh, the he was in World War II and he's the fourth infantry and I guess the fourth and one other had the, saw the most action and the stuff that he saw and then when the war was over, because he was uh, uh, a particular part of the service that he was in, he was one of the very first people going to the camps. Mm. Uh, and to liberate the camps uh, right. during the Holocaust, and uh, just awful, awful, awful. The worst that could happen. And so you 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 say, sense that sense of alienation when you read some of his book, when you read Catcher in the Rye. Um, you know this 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 detachment from from the world around him. And so I wonder if it didn't come out of that experience. Oh, I'm I'm sure, but we have to go. Now, hopefully next week we will have either Pete Silver or Carl Andre, one of them, and then if we don't, we'll have them separately, and then we'll try to get them together. Not for a debate, but just to talk back and forth. I think that right. would be good. Right. So uh, give your telephone numbers. And so uh, folks can reach me at my email address, which is William L. O'Brien uh, at gmail.com, or call me, 620-8710. Uh, and my name is Ken Gidge, and you can get me at Gidge World, which is an art uh, website, or Facebook. You're on Facebook? I am on Facebook. Okay. so and you be, actually check it every once in a while. Yes, be, befriend <laughs> us. Uh, also, my email address is kgidge at aol.com. Telephone number 
864-9332. So we'll see you next week. And Thank you, Ken. Good. See you. Seating program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.